So I shared last week that I would probably talk about more agent-oriented advice rather than just sharing my story of finding agents, so that's what I'll do. I guess one of the first questions people have been asking me is what does having an agent actually mean? What do they do for you? And I'm still very early on in this partnership, but I can say the following. One, they are connections to opportunities that were previously closed doors because there are several submission opportunities that will not look at any material unless they are vouched for by a professional colleague or an agent. Two, they will handle contract negotiations and making sure that you're getting paid what you're due. Of course, taking a cut of the money you make, but that's more motivation for them to try to get you more work because that's how they get money. But if you're somebody who either isn't good at the contract negotiation aspect of the work that we do, or you just don't like it, or you're overloaded and you wish somebody else could do it, that is something an agent can do. And three, I would say, is strategy. Helping map out what are your next steps in your career. A well-connected agent will know which of your plays make sense to submit to which theater company or which festival. Agents can sit down with you and take a look at the work that you have before you and maybe you have a retreat coming up and you want to know what makes the most sense to prioritize and they can help talk with you through that. So there comes another question of does everybody need an agent? Do I need an agent? And the honest answer to that is no. I would say it really depends on your goals as well as where you're at in your career right now. So goals. If you have aspirations to move beyond either your geographical location or the networks that you were able to build so far in the theater community, then finding an agent might be desirable for you. What I mean by that is you might be getting produced locally because you've built up connections with the theaters in your area. You know some ADs, you know some lit managers, you know some New Orleans directors, they like your stuff and you're getting produced. If you're happy with that and doing those connections and those negotiations yourself, you're fine. You don't need an agent if you're content with that being your career. Or similarly, you might be connected to a university or a college or even a high school, middle school, elementary school, or other educational program where you get to write scripts for your students to perform. And I know several people who get a lot of fulfillment out of that and they don't need an agent. You may also be a playwright who has been able to make some connections around the country and seen your work produced here and there throughout the United States or even internationally, and you haven't needed an agent so far, so you don't need an agent to keep doing what you're doing. So it really is when you reach this place that you really wanna get beyond the scope of your connections currently. But like I said, you also have to take into consideration where you are in your career. So if you only have one play and it's never been produced, that is probably not the time that you need to be looking for an agent. And I would even say, say you have one or two plays that have been produced and you're wanting to reach beyond the scope of your community, your networking. I think that still will also be a difficult place, not impossible. I would say if those two productions of yours were at Lort Theatres or other similar professional level theater companies, then you might actually be of interest to an agent who happens to like the kind of work that you're doing. But unfortunately, if your work has been produced in a school or at a community theater, that's probably not going to be on the radar of an agent. And this is where my phrase of the past year, chicken and egg, comes into play. You need to have done enough prominent work to grab the attention and excitement of an agent, and at the same time some of those opportunities are only available to those who have agents, but not all, and that's the key. Find those opportunities that you can submit to around the country that are open to those who are not represented by an agent. I have been told that when the timing is right, the agents will come to you, and I do think it happens for some people that way. They get a world premiere at a Lort Theatre Company, reviews are out there for agents to look at, and then an agent comes knocking on their door, or two, or five. 
I have heard of that happening. That is not what happened for me. So I think there is this combination that you need to kind of have in your approach. There is this reality of, yeah, it's going to happen when it happens. You can't force it, but you can get some conversations rolling. And so now we're getting into the territory of how do I get an agent? And a lot of this I've already shared in the previous video when I just kind of laid out my path, but I would say it's taking the connections that you already have, thinking about who in your network is connected to agents or who in your peer groups are already represented by agents and asking if they could do an introduction. Now be ready for some truthful answers here because there might be some people who either can't vouch for your work or don't think strongly enough of your work that they feel they have a compelling case to introduce you to an agent. Very rarely will an agent take time out of their day to just chat with a random playwright to get questions answered because what I've learned in my time trying to set up meetings with agents they're just busy people, so unless they have a hunch that this person is a potential client of theirs, they aren't going to spend the time to answer a bunch of questions like that. Now, you should be looking out for informational sessions that may happen in a conference setting, or maybe an agent comes to visit a playwrights group in your city, or the city nearest you if you don't live in a city. Do your best to attend those because those agents will give you so much more context and information than I can give you right now. There's also the Dramatist Guild that will occasionally do articles about agents. I think they had an entire agent issue of their Dramatist magazine in the last year or so. And it doesn't hurt to ask for that referral, but just be ready for that person to say no, or I don't think I feel comfortable doing that right now, because what you're actually asking in that case of a referral is, you're asking for their complete stamp of approval. And I would say, unless you know that person well, and you know that they love and are excited about your work, maybe they're not the right person to ask to make that referral and you should respect that. And then once you actually get those meetings set up, be ready to wait, to get no responses. But if you are able to get a meeting with an agent, that's a big deal. That means you've crossed some threshold in some way, shape, or form. It means you're probably on the right path, keep going, because you got the attention of somebody that thought you might be somebody they could represent. It is going to be a path, a battle of keeping yourself mentally and emotionally healthy. I was really tempted to get bitter when I did my first trip to New York and reached out to, I don't know, 10 or so agents. And the majority of them didn't even respond. And I'm somebody who always tries to respond to emails as much as I can. So I had this very, oh my gosh, my collar's been like this the whole time. So I had this very, uh, how rude, idea. And I brought this up to one out of the three agents that I actually did get meetings with. And she did say, you know, yeah, it does suck that we don't always respond, but you have to keep in mind that we're busy and it's not meant to be any kind of personal affront. It's just the fact that we can't get to all of the different requests coming in sometimes. And that helped. That helped me go, okay, it's not they're not trying to be rude. I have to imagine if I was doing the work they were doing, there are going to be people I cannot respond to, especially because everybody wants their attention, right? So be ready for all of those kinds of feelings and thoughts to come up. And ultimately, just keep doing your work. Keep doing your writing. Take whatever glimpses of hope that are out there. If a theater company was interested, if somebody did a reading, if somebody read your script and gave you good feedback, believe it and keep moving forward. And I don't mean to say that in a way that it's like, if you just believe it's going to come true and it's going to happen. What I actually mean to say is, sure, you have this desire to find an agent, but honestly, the more important work is that you believe in the work that you're doing regardless 
of whether you have caught the attention of an agent or not. And then chances are that confidence will spill over so that an agent will actually see, oh, this person is committed to their career and really are going for it. I mean, this opens a whole can of worms for the types of people that are overly confident and they don't have a good reason or substance to be so, but that's a whole other topic for a whole other video because I believe most playwrights, in fact, I know most playwrights are in a realm of constantly doubting themselves. But anyway, hopefully this was helpful. Feel free to ask some questions in the comments below uh, or contact me through my website if you have further thoughts or questions. I may not respond right away, depending on how busy I am. So just, you know, similar grace extended towards agents as to me when once I open up that door to, for you to uh, get in touch with me. But anyway, this weekend I am headed to the Junior Theater Festival West in Sacramento, where I will be adjudicating and leading workshops for young performers, I think, uh, in the larger West, Western United States region, if that's a thing. Um, but that'll be happening this weekend. Looking forward to it. And otherwise, I will see you for my vlog next week.